Hello, welcome to episode three of the modern game tutorial series. Today, we're going to be getting user input. So the first step is to press a key and see if we can get a response. So I'm going to go to our update method inside of our game1.cs and I'm going to add a conditional if statement. So if, and then the way we get keyboard input here is we do keyboard dot get state and we're going to do some method stringing here. So if we hover over get state, we'll see that it returns a keyboard state. So we can do a dot operator here and then we can use one of these options. I'm going to do is key down. And then in here, it takes the key that we want to look for. So I'm going to do keys dot. And for me, I'm going to do space. Of course, you can do whatever you want. Inside of the curly brackets, I'm going to just print to the console just to see if we're actually getting some output. I'm going to do debug dot right line since we are building for debug right now. And I'm going to do space key pressed. So now if we run this, um, our output will be in this output here. If you're using Visual Studio and you don't have this, press Control alt o and it will open it up. So now make sure that your application is focused, meaning that you clicked on it, and just press whatever key you want, whatever key you specified. As you can see, I got some space key press. Um, and I actually got multiple. And actually, if I hold it down, I get more and more and more. So why is that? Uh, the reason is because the is key down does not check if you press the key on that frame. It instead just checks if that key is down in general, which is very, very useful, but it can also be uh, not useful. Let's say you want to have a specific uh, input on a specific frame. How do you do that? Well, you can solve it with your own code. Uh, the typical way to do it is to just store a Boolean value to check if the previous frame was pressed down or not. If it wasn't pressed down and this uh, frame is pressed, then that means that this frame was the initial press of your button. So. Given that knowledge, we can make a quick little mock-up here. I'm going to create a Boolean value, uh, space pressed, and no notice how I'm making it in the member fields here. Um, this is because we do not want this locally scoped to our method here. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to say, whenever we press down the key, we're going to set space pressed to true because we press space. And now we also have to have one more conditional, and this is going to be if up, and then we're going to have keys dot space, then we're going to set space pressed to false. Now to make this really work, we have to have one more conditional. And I'm going to put it in the front here because it's a little bit faster to check than the keyboard dot gets data is key down. That's just a random optimization thing. Um, I'm going to say if not space pressed and keyboard dot gets data is key down, basically saying that if we weren't pressing space on the previous frame and we are pressing sp space on this frame, then this is the official first frame input. So it's a little bit weird to wrap your head around originally, but this is the basic structure for how you get, you know, first frame inputs. Now we press F5 and we go and focus on our application and press space. It doesn't matter how long I hold it down, I only get one input, which is exactly what I want for this specific example. Awesome stuff. So there's some more things that we can do with this. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the mouse now. It's pretty much the same structure. Once you learn this get state dot, you know, is key down thing, it's, it's all the same. So we can do if mouse dot get state dot left button equals button state dot pressed. So it is a little bit different here because we have to check out button state. Then again, we can just say debug dot right line um, left button pressed. Again, we run it, focus on our application and click. And as you can see, it's the exact same functionality as the keyboard. And again, for first frame inputs, you would have the exact same system as we did before. Okay, so now a couple more things. Uh, let's say we want to get the position of our mouse. Um, we can do something like uh, mouse dot get state dot position. And you'll see this returns a, um, a point. Or we can just do dot x, which returns an int, or dot y, which returns an int. So it's pretty cool stuff like that. We can just do like int mouse x equals mouse dot get state dot x and then we could just say like if um mouse x is greater than 200 debug dot right line um mouse is greater than or mouse dot x is greater than 200 so now we're just checking if the mouse's x position is greater than 200 then we will just print out this thing so run our application make sure it's focused and it's a little hard to see because it already activated but if i go past here Notice how my scroll wheel on the right is getting smaller because it is printing out a lot. Or we could literally just do this. We could just debug dot right line mouse 
dot get state dot x and now it's just printing no matter what and it's showing that um it's it's at 795 797 80 something and it's all the way down into the negatives because it does go past the actual displays size here um, of course if you wanted to restrict that that's a whole different thing but that's the idea of getting mouse position and it's pretty similar um with other things like game pads here um i will be honest i am a mostly a desktop developer but and it's, it's a similar setup so gamepad dot get state and then just basically go down here and you could say you could do all these sort of things so we have a d-pad and then we can do dot and then we can do right equals and then we can just do button state dot pressed um and of course we have to provide a player index here because there are multiple players with this sort of setup um and, and of course double equal sign here and so basically what this is saying is if the first player's d-pad dot right is pressed then do this so it's the same exact setup. It's all, once you learn this sort of pattern of your your target um, input, your target peripheral, get its state of, of a certain input and check if it's pressed or released, whichever one you wanna check. Once you get that, you know input. Um, now here is some optional implementation so you can like be cool with it. I'm gonna to go to our sprite.cs. This is the sprite.cs class. Um, I have actually modified it a bit so in the in the previous tutorial i made like four different sprites i made it just one and this one's very very simple all it is it's basically the, the uh, scale sprite it just stores a texture and a position and then it has a rect property that depends on the position and then multiplies or for the width and the height it multiplies the textures width by a scale factor that is constant um, and a height by the scale factor and then we have the update and draw methods here and they are virtual because we want to be able to override them um, and then we are just drawing here. I'm just abstracting away the draw, the draw call. So it's it's pretty much the same as before. So I'm just going to make a little scene for us. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make a list of sprites. Um, just call them sprites here. And in the initialize, I'm just going to do uh, sprites equals a new list. So here. And now I'm going to uh, load in some textures. And now what we can do is I'm just going to add a couple enemies here. So I'm gonna do uh, sprites dot add and I'm going to do um, a new sprite object with the enemy texture and a new position. So I guess new vector two, I'm gonna make this one at 100, 100, and I'm gonna make a couple of these. So I'm gonna make one like, I don't know, 200 and one at 300, and this one at like 400 on the right and there. And um, that should be a pretty simple scene. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure that we're all working with that. Okay, so the the issue here was that um, uh, the sprites was not set to a new instance of sprites. So I'm just literally just going to go up here and throw it right here um, because it was an issue with a null reference exception. Um, and of course, now what we have to do is to actually see them. We're going to go into sprite batch here. I'm going to do a for each uh, var sprite and sprites. And I'm going to do just sprite dot draw and send in that sprite batch. And I abstracted away the draw call, so it looks pretty clean like this. And then in the update here, I'm gonna also just loop over all the sprites, so var sprite and sprites, and I'm just gonna do sprite.update. Um, so now it's just calling the update and draw method of every sprite in the list, every single frame. So it's calling these. And as you can see, it's empty for the regular sprite. But let's use our knowledge of keyboard inputs and mouse inputs to make a player. So I'm going to add a new item and I'm going to call this player.cs and this player.cs is going to inherit from sprite. So I'm going to do a colon sprite here. Now, of course, we have to make a constructor that satisfies sprite. So as we did in the previous tutorial, just provide a texture 2D and a vector 2 position, um, making sure we use the X and A one and do the same thing there. Um, and we're not going to touch the constructor there, but what we will do is we will override the update. So I'm going to do to do that. I'm going to do public override void update and here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get some keyboard input so i'm going to do if uh, keyboard dot get state um, and then do dot is key down and i don't know what's what's a good one i'm going to do w s and d so keys dot right then i'm just going to do position dot x plus equals one why not and i'm just going to take this and i'm going to make four of them uh, that didn't work <laughs> i'm going to make four of them and this one's going to be left this one's going to be up and this one's going to be down and for left i want to subtract one from x for up i want to um subtract one from y because remember the coordinates are inverted it's a little weird 
and for um for down i want to add to y cool stuff awesome things um so that is basically an implementation and now we can go back to our game out of cs and we can create a little player so i'm going to do sprites.add and i'm going to do instead of a new sprite i'm going to do a new player and the reason we can do this is because with the um with a polymorphism and inheritance, we can treat derived classes as their base classes. Basically meaning that if we have a list of, of sprites and we have a player that in, a player class that inherits from sprite, we can just throw it in there. And as long as we only use things that are available to the sprite class, then we are perfectly fine with this. So I'm gonna pass in the player texture and then I'm gonna put it at a position, who cares? Uh, Victor two, I'm gonna do 200, 200, I guess, why not? Awesome. Now we have our player here. And I'm going to just press run and let's see if our scene is a scene. All right, we have our scene here with our enemies and I have my player and my player is moving around when I press the keys. When I hold it down, they are it is moving around very slowly, but it is moving around. So as you can see, we are now building a little game here. Very cool stuff. Now, of course, I want to just throw in a little extra thing. This isn't really about input, but it's a cool thing about um, the power of, of this sort of approach. Let me just change all of them to player. And I'm also going to increase the speed because one is kind of lame. So I'm going to do uh, five. So I change all of the sprites inside of sprites to a player. Let's run it and let's see what happens. Whoa, they're all moving. It's pretty cool. So yeah, uh, pretty powerful stuff. But hopefully this was useful. That's just pretty much it. Input's actually a very simple concept in Mana Games. So hopefully you enjoyed um, and hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, let me know. Make sure to join my Discord. And I'll be answering questions there. And consider supporting me on Patreon so I can make tutorials like this in the future. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. See ya.